It is my pleasure to introduce our very first speaker and a very special guest. Honestly, he really needs no introduction, but I'm honored to be able to share tonight with our great governor, Gary Herbert. UCARE is the product of his vision. Governor Herbert identified a need and through his leadership shepherded this public-private partnership into what it has become today. On December 3rd, when the governor rolled out his proposed state budget, he said that budgets show our priorities. That day, he requested $100 million for air quality projects, making his priority on air quality clear. Last week, yes. <laughs> Last week, at the State of the State, he doubled down on this focus with specifics, saying, quote, let this be the year that we make a major down payment towards continued air improvements in air quality. Governor, on behalf of everyone here tonight, let me just say, thank you. Please help me. Please help me welcome to the stage the 17th governor of the great state of Utah, Gary Herbert. Well, thank you, Tom, for that more than generous introduction. And I am honored to be with you. And Jeanette and I are looking forward to tonight's activities and what it represents, not only the past, but the future and the opportunities we have to go forth together here. And I'll mention that in just a minute, but we certainly want to recognize Tom's good work as the executive director, Steve as the chairman of the board, our Clean Air Partnership. I do remember seven years ago when we started this, and uh, I was so proud of myself because I came up with the moniker, You Care. And we were talking about a Clean Air Partnership and the need for us all to kind of come together. And uh, the question was raised in the little group that we were with, said, does anybody really care about the air quality? And is it something we're just butting our heads against the wall and not getting much headway? And I said, well, I care. Don't you care? <laughs> hey. <laughs> and we, we talked in terms of you know, clean air, you care. And uh, that's the moniker we've used with our clean air partnership. So it, it's encouraging to see the success that we've had these last seven years. And I appreciate uh, that. Um, we still have a lot of work yet to do, and I'm going to talk about that too. But let me also recognize we have many legislators here. The culture uh, uh, we have here that's been changed in many ways is because, because of the work of you here and the legislature having a receptive ear and understanding we can do better. And we need to do better for a variety of reasons. Health at the top of the list, but uh, we're not going to be able to continue to have a great quality of life and healthy economy that we have if we don't in fact, address our unique challenges with clean air. So again, I appreciate our work with the uh, legislature. The donors and sponsors have been mentioned. Uh, we have a, a, a guest speaker here that I'm looking forward to hearing Jim Cantori speak. And certainly I want to recognize those who will receive, will receive some awards tonight for their work and their example to the rest of us. Now, Jeanette tells me I'm at my most inspirational best when I'm brief. So uh, I'm going to try to be very quick here, but uh, you know, like you, I can tell you I don't miss many chances to brag about Utah. You know that. You've heard me brag before. We have a lot going for us. We have a lot to be proud about, humble in that uh, gratitude that we have for having a great state with great people, a healthy economy. We're just doing so many great things in so many different arenas. We have a wonderful, beautiful state. Uh, vistas and venues that other states would uh, wish they had. Uh, people come here. Our tourism and travel is increasing dramatically. Our national parks, our 43 state parks. Uh, there's just a lot of things we have in, here in Utah that are great with our recreational opportunities and healthy economy. Um, but people notice the uniqueness of Utah when they come here. Some of you don't know this, but I'll tell you, we're going to host the National Governors Association this summer in the, towards the latter part of July. In fact, they arrive on July 24th. And so we'll have about 40 governors and entourages, and for the two or three days, we'll kind of be the focus of the political world here in Utah. We did it before eight years ago. And uh, we hosted them here, and uh, the most common thing was, boy, the people in Utah are really friendly. And for a big city like Salt Lake City, we've never seen one that's that clean. So the, the, the vistas, the venues, the attitude of the people, the cleanliness of our state 
uh, and what they see or compared to where they come from is noticeable by many uh, people and certainly the governors from our great country. But we also know that we have some unique challenges because of the uh, unique geography. We have the topography where we have these things called inversions. We can't use it as an excuse. It's just something we need to, in fact, address and see what can we do to work uh, with our topography to see what we can do to minimize the pollution buildup in these inversion days. And again, that's part of what this is all about. And I appreciate the fact we've had some successes here. For example, last fall, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency determined that the Logan area is now in compliance, by the way, with clean air standings, making it the first uh, uh, non-attainment area in Utah to come into, into compliance. In fact, since standards were tightened back in 2006, so beautiful Cache Valley is doing what they can to remain the beautiful Cache Valley area of our state. Uh, we also broke ground on the first refinery in Utah uh, to endeavor uh, to begin conversion to tier three fuels. Now we talk about it, I hope everybody appreciates, this is a big deal. If we in fact take tier three fuels, marry that with tier three automobiles, the reduction of pollution, which the bulk of what we see on inversion days is coming out of tailpipes, is reduced by 80%. When we get this fully implemented here in, in 2020, uh, we'll, it'll be like taking four out of every five cars off the road on the tailpipe emissions. So a major step forward for us when it comes to cleaning up the air here, tier three fuels and tier three automobiles. Uh, I'll also just mention this, that, uh, you know, it's called the Clean Air Partnership for a reason. It really is a matter of us coming together in a team effort. And uh, certainly more people are wanting to join the team. And that's a good thing. As I mentioned, the cultural change that's occurred in the last seven or eight years, led by many people, Ted Wilson I see here in the back of the room, and, and was, uh, with our U Care has helped us as we came together and come up with a, a bipartisan approach of what can we do together and not make this a political football, but a common sense thing. What can we do to, in fact, to improve the environment and clean up the air? So I appreciate that team effort and the partnership that's been done. Last, let me just mention that we can think bigger. And we need to. It's a matter of raising the bar and building upon our past successes, but making sure our future is bright and what we can do better in better ways and new policies, new, new direction. So as mentioned uh, by Tom, uh, $100 million we've put into the budget, which I think the legislature is going to embrace and uh, help us put some significant amounts of resources into, in fact, improving our air and continue the trend we've got. I'll just mention uh, two or three things that we're doing on the state level. Now again, I appreciate what Darla said about Merit Medical. They're actually leading by example and doing some things to help with charging stations at their facility there and helping people. Uh, one of the biggest challenges we face in the, in the, if you want to promote uh, electric cars is the, getting over the hump of inconvenience uh, some of it's cost, but mo most of it is inconvenience. We, we can drive down the road with a regular automobile with gasoline, and you never worry about you're going to be able to fill up someplace and, and take care of your automobile in a, in a convenient fashion and keep on uh, uh, going down the road. But not so with electricity and electric cars, unless you're just a short range plugging up in at home. So part of what we're going to do is take the state and say we are one of the biggest employers in the, in the state, if not the biggest, and see what we can do to, in fact, uh, lead by example. And so we're going to see what we do to reduce the miles traveled by our 22,000 employees, uh, promoting more telecommuting and the opportunities there to have accountability and still provide uh, the services that we the people need to have, but maybe do it in more uh, uh, areas at times when we don't have to travel on the road and can do more work at home or other locations. We're going to reduce the miles being traveled by our employees. We're going to see if we can change out the fleet that we have here that we use here at the state to replace dirtier vehicles with tier three automobiles and, and cleaner electric automobiles. We're going to work on cleaning the efficiency of our buildings to, to make sure that we're more efficient in the use of energy. And we'll make savings of that and put it back into revolving funds so we can get through all of our buildings and continue to improve efficiency of our state buildings throughout the state. Uh, we're going to use money to create better incentives for the private sector. 
Uh, we have 5,000 wood-burning stoves out there uh, that need to be replaced. And we're going to help incent people to get to a cleaner burning uh, fuel uh, and uh, replace these wood burning stoves. Some days, 15% of the pollution in the air comes from the burning of wood. Now, we all like to have a campfire. Where wood, uh, wood is part of our heritage and our culture. But we've got to address this issue head on. And so we're going to come up with a program to replace 5,000 wood burning stoves. Uh, help us to incent people to, on their own to take their own dirty cars and trucks off the road and to exchange some of our gasoline-powered uh, uh, motors around our homes with uh, electric-powered yard equipment. So, again, let me just say that as we do this, as we end up uh, putting all these things together, here's the good end result. According to our environmental quality uh, people, I see Alan Matheson here who's helped us put this together, uh, if we put all these little things together, it becomes a big amount. Uh, we will reduce 14,000 tons of pollution annually, each and every year, out of our uh, air, uh, ambient air out there. And that's going to be equivalent to taking 65,000 automobiles off the road. Now, I said this in my State of the State. Now, has everybody got a copy of my State of the State that I get? <laughs> because uh, it's uh, got a lot of wisdom in there. And uh, I was thinking of you when I wrote it, and uh, it also works as a sleep aid if you want to put it at <laughs> night by your nightstand. So anyway, I mentioned in the state of the state, $65,000, that's, that's all the automobiles registered in my hometown of Orem. So we're moving in a good direction. I like what we're doing. We still have a lot more to do. But together with you and a team effort, we can accomplish a lot of great things. So congratulations to everybody. Uh, thanks to our Utah Clean Air Partnership for their efforts. Uh, uh, Jeanette and I are honored to be here with you as we work together, team partnership for clean air for Utah. Thank you.